It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist in New York City tonight. Drew? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, buddy. Jeff Probst here tonight from Survivor. What up, Drew? Hey, Jeff. My uh, favorite show is uh, True Knows. You can do the and- dance for him? I do the dance uh, every every Thursday night in front of the TV set. Although it's tough at the beginning because uh, because there's a lot of survivors yeah. and and it goes on longer. And um, you know, yeah, I got I got I vomited I vomited halfway into it uh, last nice. time. But I I got my own tribal dance I do, and uh, absolutely my favorite show. And what I was saying uh, last night, Jeff was. Uh, uh, I was amazed that you were able to remember everyone's name, especially at the top, because. <laughs> You know, if you think about it, uh, 16 people at the beginning, right? Uh, you could remember the 16 people's names in week number nine. Maybe. But but the thing is, maybe, maybe. But I know, because once in a while I come in here and I look at uh, Engineer Chris and it's just a uh, thousand names scroll by in my stone Rolodex. I have no idea. And then it comes out like this. Uh, give me a warm up, kid. That's, uh, <laughs> that's how, how it ends up. Michelle here tonight, though, yeah? Not Michelle, right? Right. That's right. Nice. So here's here's my point. The 16 I could remember in week nine, but week one I wouldn't know the 16, and and that's the hardest time. I mean, you have the least time to familiarize yourself yeah. with everyone. What do you do? Do you study? I I go over these little cards, but I've blanked before. Oh, you have? I've never never seen it. Yeah, because well, you're just you're. Uh, it's the same thing. You're thinking of a million things and names. Usually, like I know your name because I've seen you on TV a million times. So I look at you and I instantly know your name. But if you're brand new, you're right. You're thinking uh, of something else, and you go, "The guy with the dark hair is." Uh, yeah. Uh, oh man, I'd be like, "Hey, uh, guy, dude, bro, and uh, what's his nose and Nike uh, and chat flaps?" Yeah, over here. I just look in between three people and I go, "What do you think?" Oh, yeah. <laughs> for somebody to answer. Yeah. Drew does that, too, when he says, I agree with the guest. That means he doesn't know, doesn't <laughs> okay, know the guest's good. name. I love these little tells. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, I have, don't, don't, yeah. Don't you yeah. find that you have agreements with all your friends, which is you walk into a party, and the first oh. thing you say is, if I don't introduce you in the first nanosecond, stick yeah. your hand out and say yeah. my name this is. This is what you're you for. Tried it a thousand times. They always fail miserably. <laughs> yes. And then you find yourself getting distracted because you're angry at them because yes. what, what now, do what we, are we gonna just do? talk about? Yeah, and then they... Because they, they it always becomes about... It always becomes about, well, you didn't introduce me. Yeah, what, yeah it, I, it, I know. Because I don't remember the name. We, I gave the whole speech. I gave the entire scenario, and it played out just exactly as I painted it out in the parking lot, and yeah. nothing. You came through with nothing. And the thing is, we're rarely that person people te- when you go people probably tend to know you so they say yeah. hey adam i want you to meet my wife yeah uh, well you know. b- because and uh, you do the same i guess which is we don't play the uh, wacky neighbor on the upn sitcom it, they we i don't get called by my character name if they know me they know my name because that's yeah. the one i yeah. use and, and whatever and i do everybody's yes. outraged that vice president cheney didn't remember these sat next to edwards at a couple of occasions are you kidding this guy must yeah. meet a thousand people a day. He's not going yeah. to No, I like anybody. that. You know what that means? It means he's thinking and not kissing ass. That's, I like that. That's right. 
Nothing wrong with that. I, but, like, people are, I, I, he couldn't possibly have forgotten meeting him. He was lying. It's like, no, I don't. I, I barely remember meeting Jeff. Barely. The guy said, the guy said seventy surgeries, and he's uh, eighty <laughs> years right. old. Please cut yeah. him some slack. <laughs> so let's talk Survivor. All yeah. right. Yes. Uh, first off, they uh, they voted off Dolly. The uh, hot, I, we were all sorry. Hot blonde. So early. Uh, it's 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 how you know the game isn't rigged because they consistently vote the hot chicks off early. And if the game was in any way being manipulated by the network, that would never happen. And it's a good thing we it. can't. Yeah, it's a good thing we can't rig it because we're all sitting there going, "It's looking like Dolly, really, mm. Dolly." Well, you know, let's think about this for a second. Uh -huh. Why do we have to have a tribal council? I'm just throwing out an yeah. idea. Do yeah, we yeah, have to vote somebody else tonight? Not night one, please. <laughs> <laughs> the jury's way out. Give her, give her a break. She's a little sheep farmer, Dolly. I know, with those tight little black shorts, let me uh. tell you. And our cameramen are expert at doing this. You have a balance beam. Okay, we mm -hmm. get lucky, and all the girls, instead of walking across, decide to shimmy across. Okay, that's right. money in the bank. Right. Because you've uh. got, now you're prone. Right. So our guys are so good, they can find a shot of Dolly's buttocks, which mm -hmm. by itself will never make air. CBS right. will find it too graphic. But in a in a nice fluid motion, you come over that butt, and then you go up to Scout, who's, you know, in her 60s, right. and you end on her face, right. and we've got a nice shot. Now you got parody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's awesome. And uh, I think it was, uh, I don't know if it was Survivor. Is this nine? Yeah. Is this the ninth? Maybe it was the uh, seven. A uh, lot of sack and boob. And, uh, you know, it's essentially guys, it's essentially you doing an obstacle course in a hotel towel. Yeah. I mean, that, that's basically what half of it is, Drew. Just uh -huh. just uh, tiling everything out, and some of it yep. in, in positions that weren't flattering, even for attractive people, and <laughs> these were fellas. And guys oh. never look good naked. I no. mean, that was the, the dumbest thing on Survivors when the three guys in the Pearl Islands dropped their shorts thinking they were studs, and they looked like idiots. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's bad time. The, uh, the, uh, the sack is not... It, it's really the least attractive part. Uh, not on a man or woman, but just in the animal kingdom. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it, oh, it, yes. It, 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 even in the insect world and the invertebrate world, Drew. The no, sack is... Solen Solenderates have nothing on the sack. It is, uh, it's an invertebrate, isn't, it? isn't the sack? Because I look at it as a separate being. <laughs> well, it's, yes. it, has a mind of, it has a mind of its own, yes. Thank yes, you. Yes, it does. All right, so uh, Thursday nights, uh, 8 o'clock on uh, CBS, and a big big earthquake, This, uh, oh, which I thought was an earthquake with a volcano or a volcano that caused an earthquake. That was just uh, confusing editing on uh, well, their no, part. I th the, what I do we got? I think the volcano was going off because the oh, world was. was shaking. But the oh, was. The okay. volcano is going off all the time. Wow. Uh -huh. That thing uh -huh. just is going going, going. But we did. We had this 5.7 earthquake. And there's really? one person was in interview right? being interviewed in, for one of those reality quiet moments where they say, you know, so-and-so doesn't know it, but they're going to get it tonight. And that was our best shot because you really see. And then you start seeing the coconuts falling and then you got all these faces and uh, it was we all felt it. We were at a challenge waiting on them to get there, and the entire ground just started. Really? Yeah, like you're in L.A. Were people worried about a tsunami or something uh, of that effect? We weren't, but they had had a cyclone through there, I think, two months before we uh, got there and wiped in, out the in, place. In, now, where are you, and I think I asked you this last time, but you're always in different places. How far away are you from the camp? You're at a camp, essentially, yeah. right? Well, we had, uh, on this one... We had, we kind of just took over this little town, mm -hmm. Fate, and uh, so we were in three different makeshift hotels. Right. I was at one, some of the crew was at another, some of the crew was at a third. So we're a ways from them. Right. A long ways away. Right. It was, there was a lot of driving this time, actually. We would drive out to a challenge area and either have the challenge there or we'd drive out to that area, then get on a boat and travel out to another area. So it was a lot, long distance. How, how much work, uh, the, the, uh, the locales are so exotic and so like exquisite and so you would never get a chance to go there i mean it doesn't seem to be on any travel agents docket right. so what an opportunity number one and what an experience but um number two what is um what is a, a, a day like for you there because it's not a challenge but before every you, before, day I have, yes, I have a true. question before you but that's a good question but one one brief one before you get onto that difference between a cyclone and a hurricane you mentioned a cyclone came through there I, I think cy cyclones are, uh, are hurricanes that take place that hit trailers. 
Is that what it is? <laughs> That's tornadoes. It, tornadoes yeah, or hurricanes. Yeah, what is, what is, but they have cyclone fencing have, in the I Midwest. I have no idea. I, I only cyclone. know I got there and they said a I'm cyclone came through here. Uh, are you, are I, you in the... I think a cyclone may be a twister, Drew. Are you in the Southern Hemisphere? Yes. I think cyclones are hurricanes in the Southern Hemisphere. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, That's I think good. That maybe. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Please do. Okay. Now, so what is a uh, take your sweet <laughs> What's time, a day please? Like? Here we go. No, that's good. <laughs> but what what is? I mean, I'm sure there's something to do most days. But uh, if there's not a challenge and there's not a if tribal council, if there's nothing council, for me to do, right? I go diving. Oh, I, really? Yeah. yeah we I'll told sit us this last room, time. Sleep. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, you, so so you don't. You, there's not a bunch of prep for whatever. There's prep. It's you know. No, the, there the, isn't. <laughs> okay. There is prep. I get it. No, there is some prep in that you're always prepping the show and the challenges and stuff like sure. that. And while, we while you're some, diving and being off, <laughs> yeah. you're prepping. Yeah. I'm porn. the same way with this show. You know what? This is the first time I have ever <laughs> downloaded <laughs> porn directly from an internet site where I didn't bring it with me. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but I our, would travel with a steamer trunk full of porn, <laughs> and I would have, like, backup and a generator. I would, <laughs> would Next just, time. Yeah, you, you don't want to get caught out in the wilderness. No, and our internet connection's so damn slow, I'd have to start it at 8 a.m. and come back at 8 p.m. to get, like, three minutes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, I mean, it's called Survivor. It's, I mean, yeah. it's, you know... <laughs> You're living off the land, my friend. But, to, you, you know... Ultimate you, challenge for me. <laughs> <laughs> you, well, and and this was this was an island full of not the most attractive uh, locals. Yeah, you know. Well, How I saw you? I saw the uh, we can't judge. All cultures are beautiful. I saw <laughs> the one guy who was uh, going yeah. to uh, da help, da who was uh, going. This was last week. It, it was really amazing, by the way, Drew. Which was. The survive, you know, they do they do the reward challenge, and it's usually you know some blankets or some fishing tackle or uh, hopefully some food or something like that. And this time they win a large black man, <laughs> and and, and it's and it's like, what are you going to do with this big black guy? And it's like he's da, and he's a native, and he knows how to survive off the island, and he's going to oh. he'll teach you guys for twenty four hours. He'll oh. show you the ways of the land. And I was sort of I looked at my wife and I was like, ah. Oh. Fine, please give me a picnic basket. I don't want this dude here. And this guy was amazing, Drew. He really? showed him, you know, what plants to eat, how to do this. He he, he, uh. he took bamboo and he whacked it up and he made it into like a bed for like a mattress. Wow. I mean, did you he, see the first it was crazy? Thing, the first thing he did, how he scaled that, Walk, that tree, the palm wa tree. He the walked coconut? up a tree like a, <laughs> like a bat upside down. He was hanging down. It really and was it, impressive. Toes wrapped around the thing. I swear to Christ. And and one other thing he did is he took a coconut, he held it in his palm, and he did three quick chops, and he took right. off the top, and he was drinking. Yep. And after that challenge was over, we were the challenge finished, and they all left, and he was getting ready to go over and be with the women. And I said, "Hey, show me the rock star move on the um, coconut." Coconut. Right. So he hands me, he shows me, he hands me his machete. I take the first hit and slice, <laughs> slice my uh, hand open. Blood's oh, gushing out. No. It was a six stitch deal, and uh, wow. it just reminded me how I mean how easy that guy made living out there look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. barefoot, running around, we're running up a tree, Drew, not shimming, just, just not ran over anything. the tree. Uh, Adam, though, do you think that yeah. when everybody first saw that, yeah. this guy comes out, he's wearing basically a loincloth. Yeah, it looked like he had a boner, actually, yeah. when he first walked out, because it was sticking up. It was like a garage door that got stuck halfway open. <laughs> like, well, hey, that's my Dar's question. got a boner. Doesn't everybody first I think... I turned to my wife and said, they're going to get raped. Yeah. All seven of these <laughs> chicks getting raped tonight. That's all you're thinking. <laughs> It'll show them the island. Yeah. Put their face right in the island. Hold still. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Hey, maybe you get a sand crab while I'm raping you. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, that's that's, that's the course. Oh Was that God. what you're talking about? It's the first yes. thing I said. First thing I said. And they're all and like, he's going to the women's tribe. I know. And they're like, Dar, hoo. I mean, da, and they were crying when he was leaving. They sang was, him a song. Sang him a song like a hymn. It was oh powerful, God. Drew. It oh was very God. powerful. So we did rape them all. Come yes, evidently he did. <laughs> All right, so a big earthquake uh, tomorrow night yeah, and a earthquake. volcano going off. And uh, just now, are you there for how many more days than the 31, uh, 32 about days? About five or six. About five or six. As little as possible. Right. Uh. So it, it's really, a, you know, a month and a week for you, Tops. Yeah, pretty much. about six weeks, yeah. And... Um, <clears throat> going in and 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 it's and it's an improv i mean 
it's it's not scripted, right. obviously, and there's homework to do. But when the things tribal councils going or or the uh, challenge is going on, I mean, you don't you don't need a teleprompter, you don't no, need any cards or missing. anything. Yeah. I mean, it's a great gig. It's right? a great gig. There, there. Drew's right. There really isn't much prep you can do. Right. You can just, you can think through some things, but I've thought through them enough. You know, I, I got a pretty good idea and I'm involved in casting. So I know these guys, yeah. right. what Most their personalities are like. Procedural stuff that you have got just completely greased. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like the and, and how many. The, the council and stuff. You can, you can do that in your sleep now. So yeah. it's, just, it's in, actually. In, yeah. yeah. Well, well I was going to say. Actually, you, living around well, that a little bit just making it more fun. Yeah. Yeah, it would be nice to have a uh, you know comedic voice on the show. You know, <laughs> season ten, new, yeah, but one, uh, new sidekick. One, uh, just huh? a little, Come a on. mental note, Adam. Uh, no calls tonight. There can be no calls. You are not to take. Any oh yeah. Calls uh, oh really? No calls. Really? No calls. You, you think, no you, calls. Hold on, Joe. Uh -uh. You think no. you can tell me what to do yeah, from no three thousand miles away? I do not. Want oh to oh take yeah. Any calls. Yeah. Well, how no about calls. I go to the phones right no. now? Uh -uh. How no. Okay, Adam, smart guy. Do, do not huh? take you any just calls. earned yourself a call. No. no. Yeah, you earned yourself a call, Shauna. Fifteen. <laughs> well, you're on the you're on love line now. I, I, how do you like me now, Drew? I'm how so you like mad me? at you. I'm so mad. <laughs> yeah. You you want me to take another call? Keep talking. No. Keep no. talking, no. big oh, man. Sean. Sure. Uh, <laughs> oh man. He tried this last <laughs> night. I was talking about high school football for like fifteen minutes, and he was really into it. And so he was so into it. <laughs> That he was like, even though he'd heard the story a lot, he was like, I, I want to hear the rest of the story, so don't take any phone calls. I was like, no one no, tells no me more. what to do. No yeah, don't tell me what to do. I'm going to the phones. You know what I'm saying? We know who's in charge. Yeah, uh, absolutely. The guy with no the button. Phone call. Uh, uh, do not talk hey. to Shauna. Do not talk to Shauna. Shauna? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Drew? Any any questions? Uh. Yeah. The jefe is in charge here. Uh, I'm, the, um, I'm the Jeff Probst of this island. Do you understand? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Go ahead, Shauna. Uh, there's going to be a party on Halloween that mm -hmm. I'm going to hopefully go to, um, but I'm kind of debating. Uh, and they're going to be auctioning off the girls for dates. Mm. And um, I was wondering if I should... Uh, participate in that or not. Hold on, Drew. Tell me not to go to another call. Don't yeah, and don't go to another call. Do not do oh, it. Do, oh, wait this is too exciting. Do not do now it. Now I'm confused. Um, oh yeah, I may. <laughs> I'm gonna. Wait, I think I confused Shana, myself. Shana, is there anything awful about being uh, auctioned off? Is are these are you being auctioned to? Uh, yeah. Ex, you know, uh, it, white slavery. Yeah, sla yeah, or, right. or or. Da or who's going to get you? That'll be down three. <laughs> I got two. That'll be down three. Now three. Give me four. I got a three. Boy, but now four. Now four. Give me five. Give me five. Now five. Now five. Who, uh, who are you getting an auction to, and what do you have to do for them? Well, it's it's not just guys that can buy you. It's also girls, and it's not like uh, I mean, I'm I'm okay with both sides, but it's just I'm afraid of it going too far. Is yeah, the what, school sponsoring this, or is it just some? Uh, it's just a weird idea. Having a party. No, 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 All right. no, no, no. We'll There's a little it. more to this auction than, yeah, yeah, than Sean is saying. No, no, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't, no I don't understand. Is this they, they do it in years past? Uh, I don't know. It's no, it's a friend's idea, idea for a good party, Adam. No, it is. All right. Yeah. Well, I, look, the money goes. Is, is there money involved? Yes, the girls get the money supposedly. Okay. Well, that's just called prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. just be clear about this. All right, Shauna, you sound confused. Yeah. What's the matter, upset. baby doll? Why are you so upset? Yeah, what's going on? Hello, Shauna. Drew, tell me not to take Don't another do call. It. Don't Shauna, do it. is this is this the kind of party where you think you're gonna you're gonna end up in a corner, so to speak, with a guy that you may or may not like and, and feel compelled to do something? Yeah. No. Right. Don't, get, don't put yourself right. in that situation. Very simple. Boy, really? There's like a 15 Do Mississippi not count. Take and another call. That's uh, it. That's the last call tonight. Don't go, oh, really? Because, because, because I, 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 I was going to talk to it. to Jeff, but now that Drew says don't take Do another it. call, I might just take another call. How about uh -uh. that, Drew? Uh -uh. No. Mm -mm. Well, Do not, uh -uh. you think you can stop me? Uh, you think you're the oh, boss of me? No. Yeah. Come on. I don't Earn think it. so. Earn it. That's Pow. not fair. Sarah, 28. Hi. What's Hi, happening? Karen. Good. How are you doing? Good. Um, so basically the situation is this. I found a T 
tape in my ex-boyfriend's VCR of me mm-hmm. sleeping. Ooh. And yeah, you're na- are you naked? Yeah. S- and sleeping yeah. with it, him? I, well, I always sleep naked, so there's nothing usual, unusual about that. Wait, yeah, you were just right. asleep, or you were having sex with totally him? Totally asleep. No sex, nothing. And um, did you bring this yeah. up with him? Yeah, you know, I, well, I found the tape today, and I, um, I called him earlier this afternoon, and I was like, so I found this tape, and he's like, yeah, and he didn't know what I was talking about initially, and I had to keep probing, and then he was just kind of like, oh, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. It was very weird, and... Yeah. Well, what, were you, were you on your belly or on your back? <laughs> Makes a difference. What's that? Um, on my back. On your back. How how hot is it in your house, by the way? Just totally naked? Just, you know, legs akimbo? Just sprawled out like uh, like you had a stroke? Well, the tape starts out with me, like, with the covers kind of on. and then Oh, oh like, he pulled them off. No, it's me, like, kind of, like, kicking around and kicking the covers around and... Yeah. Uh, all right. Is, is there a light fly. on? Is there a light? Is this available for me to take on yeah. location? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. It's some, no, sometimes, it you know how long it takes to download porn when you're on like a Zanu Mahu? <laughs> yeah, I heard all about that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sarah, did he turn the lights on or anything? No, it looks like it's um, like a... Like the infrared thing that you can get on video cameras now. Okay, all right. So you, you f- this is very intrusive. It's kind of yeah. weird. It's a little creepy. Yeah, it's, it's really creepy, and it made me really like nervous about. Well, are there other tapes? Like, is he told me it was the only time he had ever done it? But how long right. have you been with this guy? Well, we're we we broke up because of um, this. No, we broke up like four years ago. We've stayed like really good friends. We've been thinking about getting back together. Oh boy! Yeah. And I found this tape today, and I'm like, you know, we're living together right now because oh. Oh, I just boy. got back in into town. Um, All right, her line's horrible, so I'm putting yeah. her on hold. But uh, break up now. You broke up. Yeah. Hey, uh, what? Just when does getting up, back yeah. together with someone ever oh. work? Yeah, it, it just never does. It never does, especially when you're, you know, you break up. Why is that? It really doesn't. It really doesn't because there's a reason why you broke up in the first place, and that's what you needed to listen to. And the reason you got back together is because things didn't work out. So it's not because the other person got better or more attractive Mm -hmm. or settled down or you got any better or more attractive. It's just you didn't get laid for a few months, and now you're slinking back to the ex. You know, it doesn't I, I, it doesn't I work. I disagree with that. that that's you do? usually the way it is, but I, sometimes yeah. it's not that simple. No, not what happened, Drew. I, I my wife and I broke up for a period of time, and it was because of me. Well, yeah, kinda, you, you weren't done banging candy stripes, and I kind of I mean, settled let's be down. I kind of figured things out as yeah. things went along. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me let me uh, let me translate. He. Uh, <laughs> He he got uh, syphilis from his last candy striper, and he really was gut check time. A little soul searching, and then he got his wife pregnant, and then had to get married. That's that's no, what happened. In fact, I really kind of wasn't I, I wasn't really interested in getting back together, but it kind of just seemed felt right, and we kind of getting along, having a good time. It just, it just it, it, right. yeah, yeah. You don't go, you don't go seeking each other again, but sometimes circumstances bring you back together, and you think, oh my god, I missed this. And was, okay. Here's, here's the thing, though. Even looking at her thing on the screen. <clears throat> Made made a secret videotape of her sleeping. Can she trust him? Every nope. time you ask yourself that question, yeah. you already know the answer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and we talk to tons of people that are like, I think my boyfriend's cheating, but I'm just not sure, or vice versa. And it's like, how can you be with someone and you don't know if they're cheating? I mean, uh, if you have to ask that question, I agree with Jeff. Uh, you're in the wrong relationship. It doesn't mean they're cheating because you have to ask yourself that question. It just means yeah. things aren't going the way they should be or something's up with you. And Jeff Probes here tonight. Yes, from uh, The Great Survivor. Oh. I, s- oh, oh, oh. I see no end. No end in sight for really? the survivor. It, it's impossible. How could it end? I don't know. You, if it, as many locations as there are, as many uh, crazy, great-looking people as there are willing to do this, as uh, long as you don't get, like, uh, gored by a yak, and, well, I could always, you know, yeah, I'd you... step in. What effort? We would, we, we would do something very tasteful the very first okay, episode. I'm, pic- Thank you. Like a, I'm picturing, like, a, a wreath, like, floating in the ocean and some somber music and then me going, we can't live in the past. Let's Let, move on. Let's move yeah. on. Yeah. Jeff would have wanted us to move <laughs> forward. 
I like that. I like that you would think of me. Yeah, a little bit. I would definitely. The first episode would be would be very very touching, and then immunity challenge. Let's go. <laughs> That's the way he would have wanted it. All right, uh, Jeff is here. We'll take a uh, little break. Drew in New York City, and we'll be right back after this. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Bloodline will be right back. It's Love Line. Adam Corolla. Yeah, Jeff here. Bro. All right. Drew, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, are you there? Can I hear Anderson yell for us? Yeah. We on now? I don't know. I believe you are. I heard Drew talking. I did the intro. Michelle, you might you better you may want to push a button or slide something. Yeah. Hey Anderson everybody. Crying out for you, Adam. <laughs> Adam. Adam. Drew, can you hear me? I hear you. You hear me? No. Anderson, can oh, you that's hear me? Interesting. No. No. I'll be Drew. Can you I hear Adam. Adam. Don't take Jeff a call. Was, don't really don't, don't take a call. I, I, I oh, it was. All right. Well, uh, don't. No, I, don't, I don't want to take a call. Yeah, yeah, no, nobody tells no me. No way, call. A cyclone is a is a is a hurricane in the southern hemisphere. That's, Jeff didn't know that. I can but, hear Jeff. But, but Drew you know did. what? I looked up yeah. cyclone though, and I got. All right. Are we couple, starting the show? Can people hear me, Adam? Now I hear a commercial. This is well, cool. This is good. This is. Do you really hear commercial? Do you hear me? Hots are up. Uh oh! All right, Drew, take a call. I'm gonna uh, push. Uh, you hear me, William? See what he does. Hey, Drew, you hear me, right? William, I hear Anderson. Ah, uh, Drew, we got we got technical, technical problems over here in a big way. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'm hearing. Yeah, you I can barely, now. I can barely hear. I can't hear you through my headphones. Something is cans, as we like to wrong. call them in the business. Okay, but, uh, I can Go hear ahead. it through Please some speaker. By. I get the feeling that. Uh, Engineer Michelle might be able to fix this if she dumped enough coffee on one of the potentiometers over there. Adam, I think you complained enough where it's time to just get new phone lines, man. <clears throat> oh, William? Uh, yeah. There we go. What happened? Uh, I don't know, go, Michelle. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, uh, all right. So, let God, me just Michelle reset. was sweating over there, man. Oh. Drew, you cool? Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you now. All right. All right. Here's the uh, deal. Jeff Probst here from Survivor, my favorite show. And it is uh, Thursday nights on CBS at 8 o'clock. And let's get back to the phone. So we got William, who's 16. Although, I just punched him randomly. I didn't really want to talk to William. <laughs> Who yeah. else do we want to talk to? Ooh, here's Jenny. She has a kid with a 40-year-old guy engaged Ooh. to another girl. Oh. He's engaged to another girl? Jenny? Yes. You're 28? I'm 28. What's up? Um, I had <clears> a child two years ago. Um, we were kind of seeing each other. And he didn't yeah. really make an effort to make it known that he likes me. So I kind of, like, went about my business. Well, wait a minute. It, uh, that, uh, already I'm lost. You, you had a child two years ago? Yes. <clears throat> with, with him? With, with this guy? With him, not knowing that it was his. Uh, All right. Uh, pardon our Who's confusion. did you think it was? Um, this other guy that I was... The beginning Pumping, of March, yes. I was seeing somebody, <clears throat> All right. and I was trying to break it off with him. All right. And the end of March, I seen this other guy. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so now what? Well, my question is, um, <clears throat> now he knows that he's the father. How did you um, find out he's the father? We went for a DNA test. Okay. Wow. All right. Um, he's coming over to see uh, his son next week. Um, my question is. Do I let him know how I feel? Um, we how do you talk. feel? I like him, um, but I don't want um, a single... Um, Hold on a second. Is it Quaalude night? It's Everyone we've spoken no, no, to no, tonight is yeah. just... Uh, bad calls, bad lines. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. just people, people with a serious like three mi well, Mississippi in between every fault. goddamn syllable. I told syllable. you not to take any calls. He oh, did, oh, oh, he did say that. Oh, 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 you, uh, you think you can tell me what to do, Drew? <laughs> I'm just saying, don't take any calls. You, you, you don't think I'm the captain of the ship? Yeah, I'm All just right. saying. I, you know, I predicted that one. All right. And, you know, well, you, there you go. You, now you got, now you got another call. You got another call. You want to keep going? Right. You want a fourth call? Jenny? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's pace it up, baby. Let's go. Let's break it down. It's only a two-hour show. You got a kid. Your kid's how old? He's two. Two. And the guy's coming over. He's 40. Right. 
And you guys broke up in the first place because of why? Um, well, he didn't make it known <laughs> that he was interested in me, so I didn't. L- look, really you didn't have a relationship. You just slept together. Right. You just slept together. Okay. Right. And well. is he single now? He's engaged. <clears throat> and he has no idea he has a kid with you? He knows. He knows. He knows. All right. He's coming he, now what's he Yeah, they now had a DNA interested. test. He's going to come over and, you know, kick the okay. kid's tires. Come on, tires. Drew. Catch up. Let's go, buddy. You're right. You're Let's right. focus. And so here's the thing. He's engaged. So I don't know what you letting him know how you feel is going to do when he's engaged to another woman. What's he coming over for? To see his son. Uh, oh. Um, but we met um, last month, and he told me that he really loves kids, and he really didn't want to have a child this way, and he's confused, and he doesn't know what to do, and he really liked me. Well, oh uh, my God. he really oh liked God. you as a friend. I mean, yes. and he's engaged. Right. Look, All right, so, so Jenny, work. yes, here's the deal. You're feeling lonely and vulnerable and all the above. This guy's engaged to another woman. He's confused. He's caught off guard. He doesn't even know he has a kid. He's going to come over there and say hi to the kid. Right. Uh, this is kind of between him and the kid, not really him and you. I'm you guys were, sure. were oh, one-night stand. I'm not even sure uh, you should really have. I mean, unless this guy's going to be in his life big time. Mm, to have a part-time point. father is going to be extremely destructive to this kid. Well, now, how about some money? Yeah, he has a financial responsibility, but it might be better to sort of create some sort of mm, fantasy about who his dad was. Are oh, you doing? Are yeah. you doing this for the kid? Or are you hoping that she can doing get him over there? Yeah, of course, yeah, that's what she's yeah. doing. I'm doing this for the kid too. No, yeah. please. If you're doing and when she kid, says the kid, she means herself. Like you right. know, when I say, "Hey, the, the kid really had a great radio show tonight." My right, brother, <laughs> the kid hot, kid's hot, huh? Am I right? That, that's what they mean when I say the kid. Yeah. Yeah, Jenny, uh, you need, here's what you need to do. You need to make sure you get money from this guy. Right. And uh, then I think you need to let him get engaged and get married and you to find another man and create a stable home for the kid, who's me. Which is unlikely. Mm, boy. What's going on? What, what else is going on? You just confused and depressed? Um... I'm kind of... All right. I don't got enough time. Here's what... I gave her the speech about picking up the pace. Yeah. Here's uh, what she needs to do. Or, uh, I don't know. It does, doesn't seem like Jenny's going to be the world's greatest mom. Oh, no. I'm oh, worried no. about the kid. I'm very and, worried. Uh, okay, so here are the priorities. No more kids. And see if you can get in a stable, realistic relationship with an available oh. guy who can there then be there for the kid. Not yes, guys you're obsessing about. Just somebody you can create a stable, boring life with. Simple That's life. right. Ride it out, and uh, hopefully you'll be taken early. Here, I got one for you. What? Speaking to the kid, name this band. The kid is hot oh, tonight. Oh, that'd be a little lover oh. boy. <laughs> Here, right come on. on. I've done that song karaoke in karaoke form like 700 times. <laughs> okay. uh-huh. I did that song. so uh, I'm such a bad karaoke sing- singer that uh, we, we used to have big karaoke parties over at Kimmel's house, and I would do the kid is hot tonight or... Hell is for Children by Pat Benatar, nice. which is really not a dry eye in the house. <laughs> and and one night, uh, you know, it would be one of these things where, you know, we'd be eating dinner, having a few drinks, send the kids to uh, bed about uh, 10 o'clock, and then the karaoke would start up in the middle of Hell is for Children. Uh, Jimmy's daughter, Katie, was probably about nine at the time, came down the stairs crying. Make him stop, Daddy! (laughs) (laughs) Stop! It's like tearing. You know, kids get, like, frustrated and they're young and they just had a bad dream about someone, probably some guy with a megaphone yelling at him or something, literally bawling her eyes out as she came down the stairs yelling, make him stop. (laughs) No decorum. No decorum. This is why you don't come around my house. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, Drew, I, I came around your house. The kids were naked. His oh, kids there were, were two naked. there. Really? They were, two, they were two, but they were still naked. And jumping off the... the <laughs> and jumping off the furniture. Like I was worried that they were going to get hurt. Drew has it turned his back to the children. Didn't seem to care about their welfare. It was very distracting. <laughs> I could barely eat. So uh, I just sort of swore off the visits. When is it okay, not okay to be naked anymore? Uh, I mean, what ages? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, Drew, what is the age where you got to put some underoos on? Well, you, you put it on, uh, you know, two is when they're throwing it off, but around eight to ten, they suddenly get incredibly modest. Then yeah, it's so like, it's got to go on again. Mean? Oh, mine said, like, I'm in the bathroom. Keep the door locked. How yeah, dare yeah. you? Okay, so that's they're good, outraged. right? Yeah. Yeah, but then what about swimming? Like, because, you know, you know they'll, they'll, they'll hit the pool yeah. up until about ten naked, right? 
No, one, maybe maybe no. about seven. Yeah, no, seven. No, no. It it really the stuff really uh, it comes on smart. Yeah, but what age? Mm, five to seven in there. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's when I head in and grab a beer because shows over. I'm not pedophile, 20, but you know until you're 25 and then right. clothes start coming and off. It comes again. off again. All right, let's. Uh, we got a question for Jeff. Uh, by the way, one I'm sure he's never uh, heard before. Someone wants to know what your favorite and least favorite. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Who is your favorite and least favorite rock and roll Jeopardy celeb? Oh, I thought it was what? a Survivor question. Oh my God. Who was what? your? Uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, Jeff hosted uh, rock and roll uh, Jeopardy. Yes. For VH1, mm -hmm. uh, there were some good people on there. The uh, Mark McGrath was always yeah. a fun guest. Yeah. He's and he's bright. He's the, I mean, he the, did right, so the well. rare the rare rock star who went to college. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now he's extra. He's an yeah. extra. He's on extra. How fun is that? He he was great. He was like the grand champion yeah. he on never the show, lost. right? He never lost. And you know who else was really funny was Joe Walsh because <laughs> Walt the, the the idea of taking Joe Walsh and putting him in a game in which he not only has to read a question but then tell his brain to push a button right. that will light up a it ain't never going to happen. And yeah. And after the first commercial, uh, he had nothing. I don't think he had even. Woken no, up I mean yet. that that was like. A Saturday Night Live sketch, Joe Walsh on that show. It, it was like Sean Connery on the Saturday Night Live version of Jeopardy. Yeah, like mm -hmm. like he 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 cannot form a sentence. And right? he said he goes, yeah, there's a, there's just a whole ten year period there I don't remember. Oh and my God. you knew he was serious. serious. Right, it was a decade lost. <laughs> right, least favorite was the guy from um, oh uh, uh, you know what's scary. Uh, Poison. Ch Chumbawamba. Poison. No. Uh, oh. The guitar the, player. Oh, uh, oh, oh. De 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 DeVille. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Right, I'm gonna, I'm Drove gonna, me. C. DeVille. We got C.C. DeVille. Yeah. yeah. He wouldn't shut up, and he had this voice like this he thought was so charming. Right. Super, super just like shut it. brooklyn -y kind of uh, just crazy uh, voice and obnoxious, right? Yeah. I think yeah. he's been on this show. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. so that's your Were least you favorite. Yeah. Who is this? Oh, you didn't oh, even hey, introduce Hans. me. My name is Hans. Hey. Hey, Hans. What's happening? Not too much, man. Thank you for answering my question. And I had another one for, for Dr. Drew and for your guest. Um, do you make any kind of, uh, say, uh, you know, allowances for people that are on medication if they're on Survivor? Like if they have some kind of, like, blood pressure medication or something? No. Are they to take that? No. What they, they, they're probably going to be ruled out of the show, though, right? Yeah. They're screened yeah. out. Yeah. If if you you know if you smoke you better get on nicorette soon if you if you're a drinker you know you're gonna dry up there's no help you get condoms tampons and sunscreen oh you get you, you get condoms. Condoms. condoms yeah well I I didn't uh. you know I I don't think we talked about that last time no. you were here that's interesting that is interesting I, is is that is that just a well, decency thing or an insurance no, they, thing or they what? want to have these people having sex, right? Well, That's sort of part of the wouldn't entry. be bad. Yeah. yeah, I don't think anybody's ever had had full on sex, but um, I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a liability issue too. I know? saw the Rupert sixty nine episode. Well, that was tough to watch, Drew. Did you ever well, see that? Oh yeah, him and um, he yeah he he was uh, on top of Johnny Fairplay and. Uh, it was almost unwatchable. What? It was what really, was this? Uh, you're probably back at camp beating off or downloading some porn or doing some spear fishing or something. But uh, yeah, you got to watch the show once in a while. It was controversial. I don't remember Very this. controversial. Yeah. Big uh, big Rupert on top of uh, Johnny wow. Fairplay. Yeah. Nice. I love Johnny Fairplay. Yeah, he's great. I don't he, know where a, the hell he is now, but I miss that kid. That guy is a classic jackass. He is absolutely what he appears to be. You yeah. want to punch him. Yeah. But you yeah. want him to get back up because yeah. you want to talk to him some more. And then hit and him then again. And punch him. Yeah. Yeah. And what about, uh, how, how often, by the way, for the uh, something, something like the All-Stars? I mean, I think it worked incredibly well. I and mean, people were into it in a big way, right? I guess. You, I'm, I, I, you don't like it? I didn't like Not it. Not pure? I just don't think you can play the game with all that personal baggage. These guys now know each other, and, and guys like Hatch or Colby, those guys have no chance because people are irritated that they were so popular. 
Right. Mm. Rupert right. would be the first one voted out in the next All-Star. You think so? Yeah. Oh, there's so much envy about Rupert right now. Really? Interesting. Oh, you're America's favorite. Really. Oh, interesting. So you're oh. gone. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. On the other hand, it's really fun It's <laughs> to watch a, a game. like It's like your team when you know your players, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, it was really, uh, it was really a, a good idea. And I, 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 I don't think you would do two in a row, and I don't think you'd do one every other year, but... Certainly, yeah. Eh, four or five years from now, you could pop another you one. I really think we'll be on four or five years from now. I, the yeah. show, barring you know uh, something uh, horrific and a yeah. lawsuit, uh, yeah. I, I don't see it ever going away. It's almost it's. But it's then again, like I a, don't I don't yeah. see that not happening. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. Now, no, that's <laughs> that's probably this year, Boy. but just yeah. not saying anything. But <laughs> I. I, it's like a game show and that it's a great format and as long as you have yeah. a, a solid host in in yourself and a solid format in terms of the rules and how the show's structured who who they're always going to have hardcore fans I, I just can't imagine it ever going away at least uh, I maybe I'm saying that for selfish reasons because I enjoy it so much all right uh, Jeff Probst is uh, in studio tonight true yeah have you, have you ever heard me kiss this kind of ass? I, I'm really I'm 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 amazed amazed. Jeff, Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, who Anderson? Yeah. Truth. Tell me to uh, stop kissing ass. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop kissing ass, no, Adam. No, yeah. not gonna happen. Not no, gonna don't happen. stop <laughs> kissing ass. No, don't don't yes. stop. You well, keep it up. Oh, keep oh, yeah. it up. Oh, yeah. Not stop. Oh yeah. Well. Mm. Uh, now I'm confused, you idiot. I'm, I'm just going to kiss ass to play it safe. All right, Jeff, uh, loosen up the belt. We're going to take a break. Okay. Drew in uh, New York, and we'll be right back after this. Hello. This is your radio. radio. Love line. We'll be right back. Drew. Yeah. What are women most attracted to? Confident guys. That's right. You can't buy that confidence. At least you couldn't until now. What do we got? You got Axe deodorant body spray. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew out in New York. Drew, you're back tomorrow night, yes? Yes. Uh, Jeff Probst in studio tonight. Yeah. Best gig on television. Next to this one. Next to this one. <laughs> this one's not on TV. But, uh, yeah, this is a great gig. Uh, Sarah Rue, who... Uh, is uh well you know her from uh barely making a uh what the hell is that show called yeah less than perfect sarah rue sounds like a snack cake sweet as sugar that girl she's yeah, going to she be does. in here uh tomorrow night and uh jeff in here tonight survivor eight o'clock thursday night i will be uh watching tomorrow night seeing the, the big earthquake and what else is coming up? Uh, you can't give away too much, but you did drop some nice little tidbits last time you were in here. I think uh, you were talked about the shark. Uh, you talked about the shark a little mm. bit. I think you talked about uh, something coming up. I think it was like three episodes from where we were, and I remember you know anticipating that. Any any monumental stuff coming up? Any tips? Anything? Not really. You know, it's funny because last season there was a lot of promotable stuff, just big things you could promote. Right. There wasn't, there wasn't this season. It's a really good season, though. It's, it's the best time I've had out there just personally because really? I like these guys so much. I just like the group a lot. And, it, and in typical Survivor form, it, gets, it can't help but get dicey. You know? right. it, it, by week six, seven, you know, it's starting to heat up, and it's a great finish. It's one of the best final tribal councils I think we've had since season one or two. Oh, where, really? Yeah, where everybody that got up had something interesting to say or ask. They mm -hmm. delivered it well. Mm -hmm. We got a good response from the final two, and it felt like we don't know who's going to win. You better have an answer, because I'm telling you right now, I'm going to vote for one of you two, because so many times the final tribal feels like, oh, it's just come on. You're right. Just, you're well, a lot talking. of it. Sometimes it's just uh, sour grapes where people are, you know, Drew. You would, uh, you'd love it because I know you hate people and the human condition, ironically. <laughs> but you know, people angry at people for playing the yeah, game, yeah, essentially, right. which drives me nuts. And, and and I was like this guy too. The guy's napping on the beach all day, and he's pissed off at the guy who's collecting firewood because he's a kiss ass. Yeah, right. You're making like, me look bad. Yeah, like which, well, which is it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're napping all day. Give me, give us a break. So. Uh, again, my uh, my favorite show. I just I, I just adore the show. And 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 now, who comes up 
And I don't know how much, because uh, you, you got to start running out of obstacle courses and yeah. games and uh, all this crazy stuff you're doing. Who comes up with that stuff? Well, there's there's a department. I mean, there's two guys in particular, John Kerhoffer and Dan Monday, and they're the challenge producers. And that's their job is to go surf or go, you know, and, right. and say, hey, what about, a, you know. No, you do. You got to be, you have to be baked to come up with these kind of things. Yeah. And they're good. Not only do you have to, first you have to conceptually come up with them. Then somebody right. has to be able to sketch how you're going to build these and then somebody has to build them you know you think of some of the things that have been created out there yeah we, we have a maze this season that is a vertical maze and the way it came about was john the the head challenge guy said i don't want to do a maze we've done a maze six seasons seven right. seasons in a row i don't want to do another maze where we have cameras and we look and so monday uh started thinking and he said what if i just invert it and i make it go straight up a maze that's a vertical maze and it's like a ma it's really cool mouse trap right and you're actually climbing in doing yes. it and it it took i think it took a month to build it is really wow. cool yeah Adam? and it's all it's not only is it is it built but it's sort of disneyland built it looks yeah. it doesn't it's not cool. a bunch of plywood it from delivers. home depot it looks like a shipwreck yeah hey yeah you, you need to kiss more ass and take fewer calls okay uh uh, no calls. Uh, kiss ass. Oh, okay. Right? Well, uh, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do then. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Do it. Do it. Bro, not going to kiss his ass. And you know what? Going to the phone, Stro. Oh, uh, well, any other that's, suggestions? That's, uh, oh, Anything I'll else? Say, what do you want me to do? Not punch, punch myself in the head? Uh, say the word. I won't punch myself in the head. Uh, don't punch, punch yourself. Don't, don't do that. I just hit he myself did it. in the head. He did it. I whack myself in the head. You want me to not hit myself again? Don't. Ah, don't do it. There you go. Now who's got brain damage? All right. The, Where the am I going, Drew? I'm right. taking a call. You're not taking calls. James. Yes. Your uh, penis is uh, discolored. Yes. I was circumcised in March. Uh-huh. And, and uh, I went in for, like, the follow-up treatment, and it was discolored, and my doctor's like, oh, don't worry about it. And a month later, it's still discolored. Yeah. What, are you, uh, dar you dark-skinned person? No, I'm white. What well, happened? This... Wait a minute. Why did you get circumcised in March? Well, I was, I like was having infections and stuff, so I just. He was planning to... it for May, Adam, but it, they moved it up a couple of weeks. But, <laughs> yeah. But, All right. All right. Here's so, the deal. Here, when, when you have irritation yeah. of the skin, you can either hyperpigment or depigment pigment, and the penis at the circumcision site or the, like you don't notice guys can get a circumferential sort of brown spot around their penis. That, that's from circumcision. It's not uncommon at all. What do they call it? it it's a pigmentation or depigmentation. Yeah, but you call it something circumferential. It goes oh, no. all the way around. Circumferential. No, but you said something else. You can get a brown spot called a... a it, yeah, I think I said, you said circumferential. Oh, circumferential. I like that. It, it, hey. Either depigmenting de or hyperpigmenting. So. But can we just settle something for yeah. any yeah. moms or potential moms well, listening? Wait, well, hold on a second because we got to take a break. I think I know what you're going to ask. Yes. But what? we will... I think it's going to be a question about should you have your son circumcised yeah, you or not. You should. Well, hold on. Hold on. Drew's with you. Drew's, a, Drew's firmly in the uh, lop-off camp. Yeah. We'll, uh, <laughs> it's like a horrible Russian camp, doesn't it? The lop-off camp. We'll uh, take the, a the quick break. Camp. I will cut your penis. <laughs> Don't shut up. That's Jeff Probst. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Laughing time is over. All right, guys. Bottom line, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call's all you need to make. Call the Dateline. The Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew in New York. We'll be back in the studio tomorrow night with yeah. our guest, Sarah Rue. From uh, less than perfect, Jeff Probst in here tonight from the fabulous, wonderful Survivor Thursday nights, eight o'clock on CBS. I, I don't care. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, that's right. Kissing and licking. Uh, when we left off, Jeff had a question for Dr. Drew, which was uh, circumcision or not. Yeah. It's sort of why not circumcision is really the question because there there are significant... Oh, there are some health advantages. You don't have to get the stenosis and irritation that can occur later from tearing from the you know the, that the foreskin not sort of working the way it's supposed to, which happens rather commonly. The theory is that you'd be less at risk of uh, genital warts and thereby less at risk of transmitting that to women and putting them at risk for cervical cancer. 
So all things being equal, circumcision, and, that, and they do it now with anesthetic so the baby doesn't feel anything. So kind of Here's the, the, the number one thing is the uh, weird out the high school chick Ig factor. Exactly. Is, chicks just get weird on that stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Don't. There's not a decision. Make your kid look like 99% of all the other kids look. Yeah. Well, well that's the whole thing. Though. It's not. Yeah. It, yeah. But where's your kid growing up? Right, exactly. I understand. I understand. But we, Paraguay. we could change it in this country, but the point is that the prevailing wisdom is that it should be done, and why not? Why Let not? Let me say this: this, this, this whole thing. It was like the metric system a few years back. It was like I remember in the seventies. It was like, hey, uh, in five years, it's metric everything. It's yeah. going to be liters. It's, it's going to be millimeters. It, 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 yeah. it, that's all. That's all it's going to be. And if you don't know it, you'll get left behind. I remember the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I always remember, I remember, the, remember the teacher. That. Teacher threatening you're going to get left behind and I always thought I like being left behind I'm sitting in the back of the class for a reason I'd like you all let's leave right now just stay here please leave me behind I, it's a fantasy of mine. Everyone just just get up and leave. I'm going to stay here. I'm watching. I, now with TiVo, I really want to be left behind. But you, you know what? Gonna, I, but, I'd, be, I'd be angry yeah. if I didn't get circumcised and then in my adult life start having problems with tearing of the foreskin and stenosis and irritation. Oh, come on, and now i got to take a month off and be on my back with my penis oh, in pain. Oh, true. Really, <laughs> you're not taking a month. What, you think you're in traction? Injection? I'm just saying. Injection. Like, yeah. Taking a month <laughs> off. <laughs> The, the point is, the, po no, the point IVs is hooked up to you. You're miserable. using a stroke cane for the rest of your life. It you have to get around pretty, with one of those larks. Yeah, well, it could be pretty uncomfortable and unnecessary. So what yeah, I, it's the weird, weird out the high school chick factor. I agree with Jeff. You don't want you don't do anything that can uh, s that can uh, soil that deal. You, nothing. You want nothing that can screw it up. And then and then so so I was saying that everyone thought well. Everyone is going to be on the metric system, and no one's going to be circumcised. Right. And it, it's just, we told those uh, Europeans to kiss our American ass. We really did. And there's like, a small little group of you. boys right now that yeah. are going to have to, at 21, like this guy. They're like, they're like the, the small little group's going to have to move back to Europe. They're like, <laughs> the guy cut uh, four millimeters off the end of my penis, and I was like, huh? That's my, pre oh, no, I got to move back. I got to move back to Europe. <laughs> it, it really is. It, it's, it, I, I really do think it's like us telling the uh, Europeans to blow us. It really is. <laughs> you, you learn the metric system, cut your, uh, leave your foreskin. We'll do none of, we'll do none of the above. Thank you, Frenchie. So, so we, we'll, we'll mark our society by making sure all the males don't have a foreskin. We love inches and we hate our foreskins. <laughs> that's really, that's really what you can say about this country. <laughs> All right. Uh, so so the idea is uh, do it because it, it couldn't hoit, as they say. And also, all you of all the guys that are in the, like, uh, restore the foreskin uh, groups, you know, the ones that are, like, oh, suing their parents yeah, and crazy. using, like, medical tape to stretch what yeah. little left they have and are basically walking around feeling like they're Vietnam vets who got a leg blown off in Da Nang. Yeah. Please, you guys have deep psychological issues. Put them in a room with C.C. Yes. DeVille. That's they, right. They all belong together. That's I, right. I'm, I'm and, just, and Joe I'm just, Walsh. I've with, just, conceived, uh, I've just yes. conceived of a new aphorism. Pound and prepuse, pure American. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Except for I'm, I'm the only one who knows what prepuse is. <laughs> you got to do better. You got you to gotta do something that's... Uh, a little more accessible. Yeah. See, Drew? You know, I, did, I, I, say, I saved my uh, uh, dime Pre for scale. No, no, my dime oh. for scale drop. Anderson's got it. For right. last send me a picture oh, really? of your hymen with a current newspaper with the, uh, with the date on the newspaper visible once a month. And a dime for scale. And a <laughs> <laughs> that's Drew. Drew made a joke. Drew made Triumph. That's Triumph. funny. Do you understand... <laughs> Drew makes a joke uh, about as often as the uh, Sox uh, win the World Series. Oh, 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 oh. He really, he really does. He, he, I was saying to a 15-year-old girl, sounded like just albino white trash, that she was going to get pregnant in the you know day after tomorrow, and she said she was a virgin. And I said, I'm going to need you to take a picture of your hymen with the current newspaper at once Proof. a month, so I can confirm it. Confirm it. And uh, Drew said, in a dime for scale, which is. Uh, which is bizarre, but funny, Drew. <laughs> Very funny. And and then we did talk about how much we love when things are photographed, like hearing aids and stuff like that. They always put the any spy cameras, anything. It's always got a dime <laughs> sitting next to it. And I just like them to use something else. And I'm not uh -huh. sure what it is. Maybe a Pez dispenser or something Thumbnail. else that would, small. Well, but see, that varies. Yeah, I need yeah. something of, of uniform size to let me know how small that cell phone really is. But no more change. 
All right, let's uh, get back to the phones and speak to Megan, who's 20. Megan? Yeah. You're uh, 20. You're bisexual. Mm-hmm. You're Mormon. Uh-oh. Um, well, was Mormon. Well, I'm, I'm still struggling with, you know, whether or not to go back to church because it's kind of hard to go when, you know, you're feeling one way and then the church is screaming another thing at you. You Mormon? And I, I... Technically, yes, I'm still in the books. I haven't mm-hmm. been going. 100%. Like, 100%. Adam. That's yeah. a drop of uh, Dr. Drew saying, are you a Mormon? Are you a Mormon? Engineer Anderson plays it works every single time. People, <laughs> an- people answer the drop every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's actually, they answer the drop more than they answer you, Drew, if Absolutely. you think about it. Absolutely. Oh, uh, I think about it every time they seem not to hear me when I'm actually speaking, but that drop they hear every time. Yep. I didn't hear what you said. Yeah. Uh, let me talk to Cyber Drew so I can understand what he's saying. So, uh, Megan, so are you, ang- hey, are you angry? Are you angry? Listen, quiet, listen. Quiet. Oh, wait a minute. That's Drew's listen drop? Yeah. Megan, are you angry at your parents? Um, they haven't exactly helped. So, yeah, I mean, I understand and I totally support what they believe. And, um, and I, in, in great part, believe in a lot of it myself. It's just that that one aspect that, you know. That, what one um, aspect? What, what, what's the question? Yeah. Well, She's the, just the angry. Thing, <laughs> yeah, you're just angry at your parents. That's why you're bisexual anyway. Eventually, you'll tell them, and they'll be shocked, and no, you'll have know. completed your mission. Yeah. Oh, she's oh they already. know. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then you're done. Well, your parents I don't, tried to foist their retarded religion on you. You got angry at them, and you decided to uh, go down on chicks in order to F with your dad. So, fine. Now what? Well, the thing is that I st- I miss a part of that. I miss a part of you know the stability and the beliefs and the spirituality. And I've tried to, you know, capture those parts of of myself in other ways, but it's it's not the same. You know what I mean? Well, the, I wish the, church, I could... the church will. I, my, if I, my understanding is correct, they will have you back. They'll Steve, they'll harp on you for your behaviors, but it's not like they'll reject you because of it. They don't they don't reject people that have been drug addicted. They don't reject people. They they'll try to change you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it may be uncomfortable, but they're not going to reject you. Well, why even bother? I mean, you're going to hell anyway. You know what's interesting? I mean, look, I'm no theologian, but I know I'm going to hell, and <laughs> but, I'll but see you in it, hell. I, think about this. This is interesting. Yeah. Is, it, is that women do, hmm. sex for women can be a vengeful uh, drive. Yeah. You know, they, but, but for guys, no. It's just a no, drive. No, no. It's just no. a drive. Exactly. You can't change it. You can't... It has no rational uh, sort of uh, understanding yeah. associated with it. And no, it's there's not no, like, there's no... Ven- I mean, I mean, about the worst I did to my dad was, uh, you know, beat off into his toiletry kit. In, oh. in terms of vengeful, in terms of using my sexuality... Well, you weren't you doing know, it on purpose. Vengeance. It just was just in the way. It just I happened been in the way, yeah. It was one of these things where it's like when you're going to throw up and you just vomit in the trash right. can. You just right. what are you going to do? You start looking right. for something. It's a mess. right, but you didn't mean mean anything by it. It was not any sort of directed no harm. behavior. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mean to uh, spot well well the uh, mini aqua velvet to the side of the thing. <laughs> no. no, I didn't mean to do that. No, but uh, but Megan, you're not living at home, are you? No, I'm not. And just to let you know, I didn't do it like in revenge or like, you know, to piss my parents off or anything because I really did have a wonderful relationship with them. All right. Um, Sounds but, like And it. it wasn't like that at all. It's just that, um, and that's one thing that's like really hard for me to believe in the church because like I'm not, I'm not attracted to a penis or a vagina. <laughs> like well, that's what, not it. How do your you know? parents know that you're bisexual? Um, I, I told them. Why? Um, because they they pretty much they had you know suspicions and whatnot and um, my dad and I have a really good relationship and um, we sat down and he just basically said you know you mean the world to me and I know that you're suffering through something and my suffering was through like lying to them all the time and um, so really? wait, wait, I, I'm confused did you, did you have a girlfriend Yeah I did Are you, you just did. lesbian Are you lesbian and that's that no, and people ask me that all the time. I wouldn't consider myself a lesbian because I don't want to limit myself like that. Because I'm sure some. All right. It's good. You go, know, we get people like something. this go on a bear when we're doing survivor casting, and you'll oh, get really? into a conversation like this where, and if you grill them long enough and interrogate them hard enough, you do get to the truth. And it's 
it's rarely what people are saying, what of they're course. fronting. It's, oh, yeah. Jeff, you're so right. People just espouse a lot of BS because it's sort of the it's the politically correct sort of scapegoat of our time. It's it's the way to justify what you do and make sense of it when the reality is are far deeper issues. Well, here here's far the deeper. next thing too. I've I've really realized for women especially, although it, got, it holds true for guys to a certain degree, but mostly for women, which is. They can now have these long-winded discussions on their sexuality where there's uh, every ear is on them. And they're like, I don't like to be limited in my sexuality. I believe that. Oh, just shut up. Just go, <laughs> go either go down on a chick or go like uh, 69 a raccoon or something. Just <laughs> let me watch, would you? Uh, just, just shut up. Like, I don't know, when did it become in vogue that people get to sort of espouse their retarded sexual notions yeah. all the time? And I don't believe that it's fair. And I am i don't judge, I'm okay? limiting. And I want to be limited limit, like you right. have a sexual And people. I Let's believe that, and it does, you know, I might be, uh, just shut up. Just go do what you're going to do and shut your pie God, hole. If everybody would just shut up, it'd be just be a oh. lot more pleasant. It'd be great, because I'd be the only one talking. <laughs> <laughs> but but th there is always a point here, is that people, n n normal, let's say people, people that are feeling healthy about themselves don't go broadcasting about their sexuality to their family and things right you know, and, and and yeah I, here's yeah. what what i think we all object to which is i i don't care what your religion is I, or if you have a religion at all i don't care what your sexual proclivity is I, I don't care about any of it i'm just reacting to the part where i have to address it now because you're confronting me with it constantly right. and somehow you're the evolved one because you get to talk about your retarded sexuality constantly and i want you to go away I just want my goddamn TiVo. Just, just, <laughs> just get your nipples pierced and uh, go, go a '69 a, a, a bovine water yak. I, I don't care. Just go do it and shut up. I'm, I'm tired right. of everyone we expressing you, themselves. We accept you and love you. Now keep to yourself. We would love you more if we didn't know what you were doing. And no one Look cares. At it that way. And nobody cares. That's the other thing. It's this sort of supreme narcissism where everyone needs to know about me and my sexuality. And, of course, you know, how could the, how could the world continue to spin on its axis if folks didn't know where I was coming from sexually? Just here's the thing. I assume everyone's heterosexual until proven otherwise, but don't care. I just don't care. The the best conversations I have are with with my buddies when when you really are just honest and you're saying the the dark dirt about why you just did what you did uh -huh. and there's no there's no masking it it's I did it because it was there or I did it because I always wanted to or whatever you're talking about men and sex now right yeah Basically. typically yeah men yeah. and sex but it, if you just take that extrapolate that on it, if you just would just get to the point what is it you want to say and say it because we're wasting time and it's all i got i only got so many quarters to put in the meter don't him haw around if you like women good if you're trying to prove something to your dad i don't care yeah just go tell Enjoy. him let Enjoy. him kill himself and we'll all move forward all right Jeff props. Jeff, you could God, really I like getting on soapboxes. That's it's great. Kind of Feels fun. good. Yeah. Because normally you're just explaining the obstacle course. You know, and then since, doing that start. Survivors thing. ready? <laughs> since Je Jeff was last on the show, I, I did a thing with a uh, this cold turkey show, and on that show, I met a psychologist that did all the pre-testing, psychological screening. They now have a group of guys that just do that. And he was telling me that basically all reality show contestants have this virtually the same personality profile. Narcissist, borderline, sociopath, drug addict. That, that's wow. a basic profile. <laughs> and and, and they're all the same people. It's amazing that these are the people that self-refer, and more importantly, get on reality television. Okay, that's a bit of a generalization, but... Uh, no, no, he'd actually done the testing. It was not a generalization, because here's the data. Okay, who was it? Done, who, do you remember I who was? I forget the guy's name, but he'd done, he'd done like about 80% of all the reality shows. And he's a young uh, guy, nice guy, very smart guy. True. And, uh, uh, a, a guy farts and you hear drug addict. Yeah, I was going to say the drug addict thing and sociopath. No, not, not, not actively, not actively, but that's sort of oh, the but, basic profile. It's a borderline well, narcissist. You know? I'll tell you, it is true that in general, the, the best, most memorable characters have either very high or very low IQs. And mm -hmm. in their in their personality, their psychological profiles, whereas, you know, Drew might, might just sort of float in the middle. A little high, a little low here and there. These guys spike. They're very right. high or they're right. very low. Right. right. Yeah. We uh, we talk to people when they're low, bottoming <laughs> out. As a matter of fact, don't take a call. Oh, uh, 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 listen. You, you think you, th 
No, you think you can tell me yeah, this? Yeah, don't, don't take a call. I've been here for an hour. I feel like I have some, you know, some involvement. Don't take, please don't I, take I, a call. I tell you, Jeff, uh, I'm a fan. I was a fan of the show. But uh, I don't come out to uh, Vanuatu and uh, tell you how to run your show. And I appreciate it if you'd, you know, afford me the same courtesy when you're on my island. You understand? And for that, I'm going to oh, take a man. call. I'm taking a call. I'm oh. taking a call. I'll tell you that right now. How dare Sally? You. Yes. Yeah, they said I couldn't talk to you. But you know what? I defied them all because I'm a rebel. <laughs> and you know what? I'm a rambling man. <laughs> that means I got to leave at midnight because I got to ramble home. And uh, kiss my wife's ass. You know when to hold and you know when to fold. That's me. Whoa. Hey, uh, Sally, hold on. I was just thinking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Rogers, it's great. He wrote a song about gambling in uh, 1969, and now he's the spokesperson for all gambling. And I think, I need a song. Because <laughs> this is, you are just feathering your nest for the future. That's it. I mean, he wrote that, you know, you got to know when to hold them. When to that, hold them. When to fold them. That song is 25 years old, and now it's like any time there's like, like hey, we're, we want to start a casino. Well, uh, who, do, who, do, who do we get? Uh, the Gatlin Brothers? No, what do you mean? We got to get Kenny Rogers. <laughs> he, sung that, he sung that one gambling song in 1974. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, we'll get Ken, Kenny, agent on the phone. We got another gambling spot for you to He. He is the he's the authority on gambling now because he wrote a song he probably didn't he even probably write, didn't it. write it yeah. yeah yeah Charlie Price wrote it in uh, in in sixty eight and he covered it in seventy four and now he's making millions just doing he's opening casinos it, Drew what would my song be that's my what I'm saying to you hurt, yeah never I'm, heal. <laughs> I'm not sure if my balls are is is going to make me millions down the road but my I son I just, is gay. <laughs> Oh, maybe that. Sally? Yes. All right, so you're uh, 27. Mm-hmm. Calling from Pittsburgh. Yes. Yeah. What's up, baby doll? Um, well, I have some weird sexual things going on with me, and I'm just wondering, you know, why I am the way that I am. Go ahead. Mm hmm What's happening? Um, first... Um, I can remember actually having orgasms like from the time I was like seven or eight years old before I even knew what they were. That that mm -hmm. does happen to some women, and okay. that doesn't necessarily mean anything other than just a little bit different biologically. Okay, and also um, I can't have an orgasm unless I'm fantasizing um, that the person is overpowering me, but mm -hmm. it still has to feel good. Um, I have to feel like they're making it feel good, and I don't really want it, but it's out of my control. I can't help it because... Do you have some reason to feel sort of shameful about your sexuality? That, in other words, sometimes this means, uh, occasionally, that uh, you feel sort of uncomfortable about being sexual, and if somebody else takes that over, you don't feel ashamed any longer because you're out of control. It has nothing to do with you. Somebody else did it to you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, is I'm, that relatable? Yeah. I'm or, sorry. Hold on that, a second. That true, you, uh, she's she's from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, you, here's the thing. Um, you uh, always float that theory, but I I really think it's more that women like being taken, and then so that's there, a there is a, that women. You're have. right. There there is a natural tendency for that. But if she's bothered by it and can't, it's a fetish, then it's sort of like eh, you know th that's in the sexual abuse range. That's yeah. maybe shameful about sex. Maybe you know shamed about it in some way, right. and maybe just. What? If yeah. I was feeling shameful about it, I mean, I'm in a relationship with a guy I've been living with for seven years, and, you know, I'm completely comfortable sharing this with him, and he knows about this. All right. Drew, well, can you... Go ahead, yeah. Jeff. I have a question. Can yeah. you fantasize about a scenario so often that it just becomes habitual, that that's what you need just yes. like... Yes. It's a fetish, then. It's a fetish. And, and that's what fetishes are. They're ways of distancing yourself from difficult feelings. And yes, while she feels comfortable superficially with her sexuality, the part that is uncomfortable for her, she escapes by turning it over to him. He, ta he takes me. I don't, uh, it has nothing to do with me. He just makes me feel this way. And hey, that's Sally? the part where she's uncomfortable. Sally. Yes. You sound uh, depressed. You, you're having problems? You've been with a guy for seven years? Are you married? No. Why not? And, um, I don't know. It just hasn't happened yet. He's and not interested have, in getting married. Yeah. Do you have kids? No. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Now, what's right. wrong? Is life going were, okay? It sounds bad. Yeah, I mean, other than financial problems. Were you abused growing up? No. Okay. No, no. I don't. Did, were you shamed that. in some way about sexuality? Was there a sort of uh, hyper-religious environment or anything like that? No. 
No, okay. no. Um, as a matter of fact, my parents were always like very open about it. Even when I was growing up, yeah. my dad told me that you know that I, and any questions I had, I could ask him. How old were you when he said that? <sighs> oh, I don't know. I was probably pretty young, actually. Did, were you exposed to sexual material at a young age? Yeah, I can like, I can, and he was. He could also be very crude in how he explained. Yeah, mm. see that that yeah, becomes that's creepy. That, yeah, that becomes really is almost a. a a, a sort of sexual abuse of sorts. If you're exposed to materials like that for kids before the age of 12 and discussions and overt sexuality yeah, can be very, very common. Yeah. What? what she saw pornography or something? I don't know. I was just thinking and about of my course, grandma listen, I used listen. to walk around nude. Oh, boy. It really But you see, you see pornography <laughs> at young age. Really it did. becomes shattering. Hold you on. Become frightened close by my eyes. I can see the gray pubes. Uh, I can see him. I swear I can see him. Is this another case yeah. of what we were just talking Very about, sad. though, that Sally knows the answer? If we depressed a little <clears throat> further and just said, what is it? She's yeah. got to know what the deal is. Uh, well, the deal is she saw this, this traumatizing material at a young age, and, and people don't, however, really realize what's happening to them. They, they distance themselves from the experience, and then it becomes sort of implicit in their behavior and their memory systems and how they act out their sexuality. And they're not really aware of it anymore. It's just how, they, you know, how their sexuality emerges. And All this right. is the case with Sally. In Adam's case, he's because of the mm. trauma about the pubes, he has to focus up top. And he became <laughs> the big top guy, you know. Well, I like the, the, I'm, I like a busty woman. I, right. I'm and that, not and it takes your, that. that takes your eyes away from anything below. And so right. you're not so traumatized anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I want them to wear a diaper. The that's question Sally wants to ask, I think, is not why, but how do I change it? All right, Sally. That's my psychic yeah. ability. Uh, okay, it, it, you sound depressed. It sounds like your childhood was uh, less than perfect. It also seems like you're in a stagnant relationship. You've been living with a guy. You've been with him for seven years. Seems like you'd like to get married and move on with things. I suggest uh, either he uh, s's or gets off the pot. Yeah. Uh, I suggest uh, you actively do something about your financial situation, like get a better job or get a little job training or something like that. And then uh, thirdly, maybe uh, opening yourself up to looking into your past just a little bit and not saying that your dad was sort of euphemistically an open guy or yeah. uh, not uptight, right. but maybe that's, more that's like uh, he had a, cr a couple beers and got out of line, at least verbally, a few times. Yeah, would say did, stuff that would, didn't, didn't, didn't really sensitive to how it affected a young girl growing up. That's right. the reality of what happened here. All right, let's talk to Dan real quick before we go to break. has a question for uh, Jeff, which I'm sure he's heard before, but ask again. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, this is for Jeff and Adam, if... Mm -hmm. uh, if Jeff has Survivor ever planned on having a celebrity Survivor, and if so, Adam, would you do it? <laughs> uh, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, we, well, in the <clears throat> beginning, we did after season two, when it was really big and it you know beat Friends and it was the most watched show. Everybody was talking about that, and the problem <clears throat> was lining up schedules with actors who have little hiatus windows, but then right. they get a movie and they can't promise they'll do it and all that. We probably wouldn't do it now, but no. I, I to me the the show has a sort of purity to it that and and plus since then there's been other attempts at these yep. sort of um, a celebrity get me out of here kind of debacles that fell flat on their face although albeit you could argue that they didn't actually have you know, Nikki Zering's uh, sister is not exactly what you call it. Well, and they caved into them. Those guys complained and got tense, and then they right. complained and they got food. It right. wasn't uh, right. But would you do it? Uh, I, I would definitely consider it. I'm that big a fan of the show, but it is a hairy show. I mean, the idea, you know, with just seeing the bugs crawling around is uh, is enough to uh, freak me out. But now I didn't know you got condoms, so you know that uh, <laughs> I could be now. back on. All right, uh, I would definitely uh, give some consideration. Here, the real question is, you wouldn't want, you know, but I'd be way down on the list of uh, guys you'd be going after. Believe me, you would start at the top, and by the Who time would you be got at the to top, me, I. I, well, you you would your fantasy answer would be you know John Travolta and whoever, but then realistically that would never happen, and it'd probably be like uh, what Bonaduce said. No, get Carol on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it would work. All right, we'll uh, take ourselves a little break. Jeff Probst in studio tonight from Survivor. We'll be right back after this. If you need help, call Loveline one eight hundred love one nine one. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew back in studio tomorrow night in New York City tonight. Yep. 
Jeff Probst in studio tonight. Sarah Rue coming in from Less Than Perfect tomorrow night. Of course, talking about uh, Survivor tonight. And um, excited about tomorrow night's show. Big earthquake. Big earthquake. 5.9. And uh, I don't know what there is to knock over on that island. Coconuts. But, uh, coconuts. I just, uh, I just love to see that uh, Nauru guy run. What's his name? Da? Da. Da ran right up the... Right, he ran up the tree, Drew. Mm-hmm. Like a squirrel, he ran up that tree. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what they were. It must, must, it must have just been um, like, uh, like, like a, nothing but black ball sack to uh, anyone who was uh, underneath him. I know, I know that sounds crude, but but uh, an eclipse of sack must have been. Because oh, I remember underpants. the Rupert Johnny Fairplay thing. Now, what happened? Did, yeah, where they the went 69. down the yeah they yeah. went down the net ty- netting type of thing. I told you, yeah. I told you, get to it, Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie? yes. 29. How you doing? Good. What's up? How you doing? Uh, well, I just wanted to call, and uh, I was talking to the screen earlier. I just... No, I, I don't believe him already. <laughs> well, I'll some... hear it. Oh, you do, Drew? I, I believe him. I what just don't like him. Do? That's yeah, true. yeah. I know you don't like him. All right, Ronnie, right. go ahead. I've just been waiting for a long time, man. I just got to my house. I'm outside of my car talking with you guys. Okay. What's the question? Okay. Um, I just got back with my... Um, She's actually the a mother of my son, mm-hmm. and uh, and we were apart for you know a couple of years, and um, you know we were, we were we were very sexual before, and you know just for other issues we separated, and and uh, I went you know I was out of the state, and and uh, I'm back, and and so anyway we're back together. Florida. We had a threesome. We had a, mm-hmm. you know we we just whoa we whoa, a threesome. whoa that's, whoa 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 that's you 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 your girl and your son. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, oh, okay. Wow. No, but, uh, you know, why are we? Why did you separate? Why are we apart? Uh, well, I had to go out of town for I, I had to go out of town for family. Um, and no, uh, wait a minute, stop. Yeah. Why you know how break it is. up? Wait it's it's all night with these calls. I know, but yeah. listen, <laughs> get to it, Jeff. I like Jeff because he doesn't like survivors. He doesn't like love line callers. He doesn't like <laughs> anybody. He's angry. I like that we can hang out, just yell at people. You and I should just drive around while I yell at people while we're on the road. <laughs> but, but here's uh, the deal. He's saying, he yeah. just, you know, why did you break up with this well, one? Well, Drew, you know what it's out. like. You have relatives on the East Coast. You got to visit them uh, for like a Memorial weekend. You break up with your girl. You get a divorce, right? Exactly. You, you go out of town. You see some relatives. Right. Sure. <laughs> so what's yeah, the deal? Why did you break up? Okay. We, well, we broke because we were young. We were just young. We were young when we got together. And... Um, you know, and you didn't want to be with her. You you decided oh, yeah, you were done with her. her. That yeah. That's we, fine. We, we, Why did you, you can come out and just say that at the beginning? You wanted to leave. All right, so you left, okay, and then you decided, come, you, decide, yeah, you decided to come. You decide, yeah, please, honest that we're looking for. And right. then you came back, mm-hmm. and then how long have you been back with her? We've been uh, we've been you know back with each other for about uh, I don't know I'd say about good four maybe four months. And we immediately went into the three something. No, no, no. This this was just over the weekend, this past weekend. All right, well, you know, that, we that's, the end, that's the end of that. This guy's right. going to screw you up. Who is the threesome with? With a friend of hers from work. She's a male? No. I'm, a female. female. No. Correct. Female. Who All wanted right. it? Well, you know, we just always, we talked about it, you know. And, no, she, uh, she's looking yeah. for trouble. She is looking she for is, trouble. And, and it, he's, open for, he's open for anything, and she's looking for trouble, so. Yeah. All right. All right. so she most wants erotic to and, and most threatening experience simultaneously. Really? Well, that's a reason to get mad, dude. Jeff. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And she, what Jeff. she's doing now is I notice she's just calling her more, you know, when she's like home or we're out somewhere and, and she's calling her and or, you know, she's, you know, like, you know, vice like versa. And, but I don't know if I should just be worried about it or just kind of go with it. And All right. Listen, uh, Ronnie, Ronnie, first off, give the, do the kid a favor. Give it to uh, like some hyenas. Throw it in the hyena cage at the zoo and give the kid a shot at a decent childhood. Would you please? You two knuckleheads raising this kid. You're 29 for Christ's sake. I mean, we're good parents, though. I mean, we. Oh, you're you're the best. None better. Yeah, yeah. You've left for how many years? That's every parent should leave for numbers of years, especially the dads. No, nobody better. I I left for. I left. I was out of town for a couple of months, and that just kind of put the icing on the cake. But I've always been there for, for my, you know, for my son. Sure, sure. Someone's got to hand you a towel when you're Again, banging someone an, from work. Another guy who knows the answer to his question. Yeah. What's so? Listen, Ronnie. Who needs the show? Do I? You know, should I be worried about the calls? Or you're, 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 you may be right. Hey, Ronnie. Look, here's the thing. You're 29. You sound like you're 21. Get it together, brother. You uh, this relationship. It, 
probably never was meant to be, but unfortunately you have a kid now. So you have to both, on behalf of the child, start acting like people that are, uh, you know, a couple months from 30 rather than uh, just getting out of a summer camp in 14. For the love of Christ. And she and, clearly and, is, yeah. is into a lot of chaos. She's mad at you and she's uh, you, know, thre- you know threatening you with this relationship with this girl, which may or may not be real. Who knows? Who knows? Ronnie, it's all what do you chaos. S- you must sell something for a living. What do you sell? <laughs> yeah. I actually just help people with their finances, believe it or not. Really? You're not selling You don't anything? sell financial products. What's that? You don't sell financial products. Yes, I do. Okay. All right. There's something, you're a salesman, because you're one of these guys who has a rap, you ask a question, then you give the answer for it, you're going to screw the kid up. And by the way, is it a girl? Boy. It's a boy. Oh, it's a boy? Good. Yeah. They'll, they'll just uh, be a gangbanger or something. Girl goes right into pornography. <laughs> All right, Ronnie. Get it together. Stop acting out. No more threesomes. No more threesomes. That's it. That's it. And focus on your kid. And, and look, uh, we hear this rap every night. It's like, I... I I'm go a out. Parent. I'm, I'm, I'm a raging great alcoholic. I'm, I'm a heroin junkie. addict. I just great turned parent. over a Circle K. Uh, I lit a bum on fire. <laughs> I'm a great parent. I'm a great parent. You, look, first off, you can't be a great parent if you're a horrible person. There's no such I thing. Just, I, th- I was just thinking that you've got to be a great person and you've got to be able to sustain in a great relationship. That's what makes a great parent. That's it. I, I'm a rapist. That's it. Drew, please. No, that's it. Everything else is your. Everything else is evidence of you not being a great parent. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. And and, and by the way, so uh, according to your logic, uh, the guys who uh, give to the March of Dimes and work the fifty-hour weeks and uh, to volunteer down at the homeless shelter are horrible parents, or do they get to be great parents too? Is is ever everyone's a great parent? You're no. you're junkie. That's the point. You're uh, whoring out your parent. wife. You uh, you kick the puppy and put the uh, M80 in the ass of a kitten. But uh, great parent. Oh, great. Great. Now I got to go to a clan meeting. Great parent. <laughs> got to go to. I, we, I'm going to swingers club with my old lady. Great, Great parent. parent. I'm bang, Great. banging my uh, the bejesus out of my secretary. Great and parent. And she's uh, she's handicapped. Great, 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 great parent. parent. Great, great, great parent. I just ripped off a guy on a car warranty, but great. I great moved guy. to Florida for three years. Moved to Florida. I'm, I'm there ignored for my the son. kid. I'm there yeah. For my son. Oh no. Great. great. I'm great. You. Loving your kid is not being a great parent. You actually expressing love to your kid is what makes you a great parent. Yes, do you, Drew? Do you remember you, the guy in Florida that was driving us around was uh, telling us what a great parent he was? And he, he yeah. saw his kids one, in, he was in Florida. <laughs> he saw his kids Florida. once a year in Michigan. Like a once kid in a Michigan. Yeah, it was a great dad. And by, by, by the way, it's easy to, to be great the one day you see. Yeah, it's right. like, so here's what it is. It's like, well, I see the kid once a year. We, we go, go to Knott's Berry Farm, right. Farm and then TGI Fridays uh, for, for all... Uh, for blooming onion and all he can eat. So, okay, one day, yeah, yeah, you're a great parent. It's like, it's like I'm the world's greatest employee. The one day I showed up for work, I showed up right. early and I got all my Same work done. Thing. Same thing. Yeah, but you, you got to show up the next Monday. No, no, greatest employee. Employee of the year right here. Showed boss up early. Boss had it in for me. Boss had it Di- in for me. Didn't even steal any copier toner. What an employee I am. What a dad you are. Please, I, and by the way, who are you at? talking to for christ's sake <laughs> no, would I'm you not. listen to yourselves <laughs> you live in florida your kid lives in michigan you're a great dad or maybe maybe their logic is well I'm, I'm 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 an alcoholic and i'm sexually abusive so i'm a great dad by staying away from my kid maybe well, that, that maybe that's it that. Drew. May, maybe that's the twist we don't know I, about. i think the real twist is that their father was a, a physically abusive alcoholic and therefore they would have rather had the dad be absent so they're going to give that gift to their child right I'm giving the, you the gift of absence because I can't beat you from Florida. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> that should be the Florida bumper sticker, by the way. You can't get beat from Florida. <laughs> Welcome, de- Welcome deadbeat dads. All right. Let's uh, take ourselves a little break. Uh, Jeff no, you, Probst. You yes. can't beat our deadbeat dads. Yeah. No, that's no. good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, maybe, Drew, that's maybe not it's, bad. Uh, that's I, catchy. Uh, uh, Florida, come for the waffles, stay for the deadbeat dads. <laughs> All right, we'll work it out, Drew. Jeff Probst here from uh, Survivor. That is uh, CBS on uh, Thursday nights, 8 o'clock. Big earthquake episode tomorrow night. We'll take a, a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Love Line will be right back. So get your problems ready. Ready. Hey, our 
everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew in New York tonight. Going to be back in studio just in time for Sarah Rue tomorrow night. Yeah. Jeff Probst in studio tonight. Big fan. Woohoo! I forget. I get caught up in listening to the show. I'm sitting in here and just like I do every night. Listen. Seven months and ever since, well, not like every time we have sex, but there's been quite a few times since mm -hmm. I made out with my friend that I've been like imagining that it's either her or a different girl. Are you mad mm -hmm. at your boyfriend about something? Um, no, I wasn't mad at him. Like, we weren't, like, having the best time, but... What, what's the problem? What's going on? Um, I don't know. Well, like, I'm just afraid that, I don't know, I'm kind of concerned that maybe I'm a lesbian and I don't know it, or, what's like... What's going What's going on with your boyfriend? Uh, what's the problem? Who cares? I got that's a better question. A, look, that's the issue. All right, but we're not going to get to that. Why? Look, you said you, things are not going well with the boyfriend. What's the problem? Well, I don't know. Like, we just haven't been getting along too great. Why? All Describe right, Drew, that. What please. does that mean? Please, uh, Drew, what, would you go smack your head against a locker it would, so you be, could get something done? Yes. It would be, be better. Yeah. <laughs> More gratifying. Yes, it would. Uh, by the way, when they invented lockers, who knew they were going to take such abuse? <laughs> people punching them, people whacking their football helmets against them, guys throwing stuff at them. I mean, you really, when you invented a lock, you think, well, here's a nice thing. I'm going to make a nice, nice contribution. Lock, yeah, you got a, little, got a little code thing. The guys can keep their yeah. shorts in there. Who they, knew people would be beating the crap out of them? Is this part locker, part drum, you see? Really? And that and a locker would be responsible for so much for so much a mental trauma. Think how many kids were pushed up against a locker oh, by yeah. the bully. Yeah. Yes. Or Thrown in, in lockers. lockers. Those bastards who made those lockers should be locked up with yeah. CeCe DeVille in the, and uh, who and else? Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh. Okay. And, and, uh, and uh, Johnny Fairplay in their own locker. Wouldn't that be poetic justice? And all the guys justice? who have foreskin. That's right. Uh, That's yeah. who we no, also just the foreskin. <laughs> all right. Now, hold on a second. Shuffle right, it. Stop talking to Grace. Let me talk to Grace. Grace. Yeah. When when you fantasize about being with uh, the girl when you're with your boyfriend, mm -hmm. how do you uh, explain the penis? You uh, know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, I know. But, like, I just imagine that it's like a strap-on or something like that. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. wow. No. <laughs> hey, Grace, no, is, that, is making out with your female friend, was that cheating? Um, he considered, like, he thinks it would be, that's why I haven't told him. He doesn't mm -hmm. know that it even happened, but he considers it cheating, but I don't... Really How do you know, did, did you happen to bring it up to him to test him? How, what would you say if? One yeah. of those sorts of discussions? Um, yeah, and he, yeah. like, his ex-girlfriend, it happened to him, um, mm -hmm. with her, and Imagine he that. broke up with her over it. <laughs> okay, so look, yeah. Grace, I think maybe this relationship is done. Yes, that's you're angry. You're having fantasies about women. You are cheating, uh, yeah. um, albeit it's not egregious, but you're uh, you know being well, intimate like, with other people. Heterosexual yeah. women commonly retreat to women when they're being brutalized in some fashion in their relationship. Well, I'm not being brutalized. Like he's not beating me up or anything like that. I don't. I don't, I'm by, by. I'm being overly uh, sort of maybe yeah, dramatic with that. But but they're being uh, they're being they've made to feel bad in the relationship. They'll retreat. All right, I feel bad because William's been on hold for 118 minutes. Wow. He was the first call, wasn't he? Oh, I don't know. Oh, he, he was? To, he was he the guy I talked to at the very beginning? Yeah. Oh, oh. oh, that's cold. All right, I'm sorry, William. Are you still there? Yes, I am. Oh. Sorry, brother, man. That's all right. Hey, um, I just got hired at a, a L.A. Unified School District, and uh -huh. um, I'm making like $200 a week, and my mom wants to take 50% out of my paycheck, and I was just wondering, is that fair? Because I, I think I'm earning the money, I should be able to keep it. What are you doing? What? What, what? Yeah. What are you doing? You're uh, 16. I'm just an assistant helping around at the actual district, and my mom's on the line right now too. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Oh my God, she's been on hold for 118 minutes too. Yes. All right. Oh, I'm, no. I'm going to try to go fast and just call her uh, William's mom. Okay. William's mom. Yes. All right, you're there. Now William is 16. He's he's bringing home a couple hundred dollars a week. I a potential job. Yes. And, Potential, um, yeah. I'm sorry? And you would like, you, you think you're entitled to half of that money? That's correct. For, and, for you, and, for, for living expenses, for the two of you, or so he can put it away in a college account or something? Well, I'm a single mom of three. I work only five and a half hours a day. I also work for a school district, but it's not a full-time job. Mm -hmm. um, I struggle with all three of my kids. No help from Dad. Uh, I don't think I'm being unfair. I've raised William. I've done the best I can. 
I still, yes. you know, drive a 1986 car, and I think I should be able to keep half of that. For, I mean, he eats like a teenager. Mm-hmm. You know, right. that, that, that alone would cover right. maybe the groceries. Here's the thing, William's mom. Here's the problem. Uh, you're going to end up getting 450 bucks out of him. He's going to end up spending 20 grand in therapy and resent yeah. for the rest of his life. That's the problem. On the other hand, if you really need the extra three or four hundred dollars a month to make to make, to make ends meet, yeah. then that's a necessity. Yeah. I mean, if it, it, it and and if that's the case, you got to do what you got to do. And William, unfortunately. Uh, you got a tough hand dealt to you. Your dad abandoned the family, and now sort of you're taking on a parental role, and you're going to have to contribute. Ultimately, William, I, I I can guarantee you it will make you stronger and better. Yeah, every every yeah. successful entrepreneur has this story. It was never, oh, we had it great. It was cushy. It was a wonderful life. I had a silver spoon in my mouth. No, they grow up hungry, and they understand what it's like and the value of a dollar and what it's like to work early. So, William... As much as you may resent it, she may end up uh, teaching you some valuable lessons about life. And if she needs it, she needs it. And maybe you guys strike way, a bargain. Maybe right, not, not 50%. Right, like, maybe 25% or something. Yeah, give her 50 bucks every yeah. every week, and yeah. uh, that'll be her uh, tidy. Right. And, All right, and we'll be careful a, that he doesn't build resentments against you and the other kids. We'll have a uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back. Dude, you got issues. Call Love Line. 1 800 Love 191. Hey, everybody, it's Adam. And I'm Dr. Drew. Yeah, well, that's the show. Oh, so many questions, so little time. I want to thank Jeff Probst for coming in tonight from The Great Survivor. He did a lousy job of promoting Survivor. That's all right. Oh, oh, are you kidding? I, Adam I did it for it you. Yeah. Times. yeah, yeah. Yep. Thursday nights, everybody. CBS. Okay. Eight o'clock. Big earthquake tomorrow. Look yeah. out. Uh, Sarah Rue on tomorrow night. And uh, Drew, give me a call. I'm going. You to. got your old lady with you? No. Good. Cut. So cut quiet. that bag. Where are you going by? It's three a.m. over there. You swing yes. by Scores. Have a have a little nightcap. Oh, or you oh, pop into the room? Oh, you, you know me. That's what I always right. do. Yeah. We'll uh, take a little extended uh, 22-hour break. We'll be back uh, tomorrow night with Sarah Rue. And until next See time, it's Adam Carolla. See you, Drew. For Dr. Drew saying, mahalo. I will cut your penis. <laughs> this has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.